Okay, kids, here we are. This is called the matter section of chemistry. Matter is stuff. We're gonna determine what is matter, what are the phases of matter, what are physical and or chemical properties of matter. We're not gonna to study too much chemistry. We're gonna stick with the physical stuff now. Um, and there's some vocabulary. And uh, the vocabulary is a joke, but it's true. You gotta master it. You gotta put it on a leash like a dog and you gotta own that dog. You gotta own these vocabulary uh, words so that we can speak back and forth and know what we're talking about. And there's a little joke for you there in blue. So define matter. Matter literally in chemistry or in reality is anything that takes up space and has mass. That means really big things, really small things. A blue whale in the ocean takes up a lot of space and has a lot of mass. I take up a fair amount of space and I have a fair amount of mass. An atom or even an electron takes up a very little bit of space and has mass. Everything that is something has mass and takes up space. You can't have one without the other and you can't have one. Um, nothing has mass and zero volume and nothing has volume and no mass. There are four states of matter or four phases of matter, solids, liquids, and gases, A, B, C. And then there's gonna be something called aqueous. Now, aqueous is a vocabulary word, and we're gonna see this a lot in chemistry. Things are dissolved into water. Now, you could dissolve a lot of different substances into a lot of different liquids. Some things dissolve into gasoline, but not into water. Uh, some things dissolve into different other liquids, but not into water. Aqueous is dissolved into water. That's our most common solution and uh, aqueous. Some people also say, what about plasma? Plasma is one of these theoretical physical things like fire is a plasma. It's energy. It apparently takes up space, but it doesn't seem to have any real volume. It, it sort of is there and not, we're not gonna talk about plasma. See how crazy this conversation gets? What's the weight of fire? Forget about it. Solid liquid gases and aqueous. Now, the word aqueous means dissolved into water, not other liquids. And you can have things like salty water or tea or coffee or acids or bases. A lot of things dissolve in water. Uh, sugar water, soda pop, seltzer. Seltzer is carbon dioxide, and in this case, a very small little bit of mandarin orange juice dissolved into water. Okay, those are called solutions. Aqueous solutions. Solution is when one thing is dissolved into something else, usually they're water. And in this case, when it's aqueous, it's gonna be dissolved in water. Now, matter can be pure or mixed. There's two kinds of matter. There's matter. And the two separate kinds of matter is the pure stuff and then the mixed up stuff. Now, pure matter is going to include all of the elements on the periodic table. There's 118 elements. And then there are millions of compounds. Compounds are also pure. Compounds are like water or sodium chloride. They have a formula. They're in specific ratios and they're bonded together in specific ways. Now, mixed matter is not the same. Mixed means literally it's just in your pocket mixed up or it's in a bucket or a tube mixed up but it's not bonded into something new. When you put salt and water together, you have mixed it and you've made, I guess what we call salt water, but you can evaporate the water or boil the water away and you, you separate them out very easily. They're not bonded into something totally new with new properties. Mixed just means literally in the same place, stirred together, or not stirred together, just in the same place. But pure stuff are the 118 elements and all of the millions of compounds. And my water and your water are exactly the same, physically and chemically. My sodium chloride and your sodium chloride are exactly the same. The stuff you put in the pool to kill the germs that a lot of people just call casually chlorine is actually called sodium hypochlorite, N-A-C-L-O. There's three atoms bonded together, sodium, chlorine, and oxygen. One to one to one ratio. My powdered chlorine powder, it's not really chlorine, it's sodium hypochlorite, is the same as yours. Those are pure substances. There, there's one kind of substance called sodium hypochlorite. I can have it, you can have it, it's the same stuff everywhere. 
but mixtures are just mixtures. What are physical properties of matter? Physical properties are properties that can be constant. They are constant and they're measurable. So water has certain properties that you know of, like the freezing point, the melting point, the boiling point, and a whole bunch of other different things, the density, and, and there's more. We'll go through some of them and we'll learn about them during the year. But matter that is pure has a constant and measurable set of properties. My water has a boiling point. Your water has the same boiling point. You could measure it, I could measure it. The density of iron. My iron has a density. Your, your density of iron is the same and we could both measure it. And they don't change in different parts of the world or even different parts of the universe. The density of iron is a constant and never changes. And we can use those constants to even discover what is this stuff or not. And the examples of physical properties, went through some of them, but here, density. Density is how much stuff divided by how much space does it take up. Density is, I guess it's a little bit man or woman, human made, um, because it's a calculation. Boiling point. Now, this is an interesting thing. The boiling point is when all of the liquid can jump into the gas phase. But when a gas turns back into a liquid, it condenses. And that temperature for water, 100 degrees centigrade is the boiling point. It's also the condensation or the condensing point. It's just a matter of, is it getting hotter or is it getting colder? Is it gonna go into the gas phase or is it gonna change back into the liquid? The freezing point actually is the same temperature as the melting point. For water, it's zero degrees centigrade. If the temperature is getting colder and colder and colder, when the water hits zero degrees, it begins to freeze. But when ice is getting warmer and warmer and warmer, when it hits zero degrees, it begins to melt. Hardness is something called the Mohs scale, M-O-H-S. Welcome to Mohs! That's a restaurant down the block here in Vestal Parkway. How hard is something? Diamonds are the hardest things and different substances are harder or less hard. That's basically how they're built. That's a, a constant. Some things are magnetically attracted to magnets. Some things aren't. Some things dissolve in water, how well they dissolve in water. Those are physical properties. Some stuff dissolves well in water. Some stuff dissolves a little in water. Some stuff doesn't dissolve at all in water, but they dissolve in other solvents like oils or ethers or something. There are many, and there's many more, and we'll get to some of them too. Things that we, I don't want to talk about yet because we're not up to that, but we'll get to them. Physical properties can be measured and they don't change from here to there. Physical changes. Physical changes can also be called phase changes. When you go from one phase of matter to the other. Now there's four phases. Aqueous is really when you become a mixture. Aqueous technically is a phase, but it's not a different phase. If you had iron, it could be a liquid, a solid or a gas, but iron can't be aqueous. Aqueous is a little different, but there are phase changes. You can go from liquid to gas or gas to liquid. Those are called phase changes, physical changes in phase. It doesn't change your H2O. It's still chemically water, but it's in a different phase. Melted iron is iron. Solid iron is iron. If you could make it crazy hot enough and make iron gas, it would be freaking crazy hot. You wouldn't want to be anywhere near it, but it's still iron. Chemically, it's the same. Physically, it's in a different state or a different phase. Now, you have to be able to name all of these different phase changes from solid to liquid and liquid to solid, from liquid to gas, from gas to liquid. And then there's two more at the bottom that you're probably unfamiliar with where solids can go directly to the gas phase or gases can go directly to the solid phase. So there's six of these, you have to memorize them. Some of them you know, I'm sure. Some of them you might not, especially the bottom two. Here we go. First two, going from a solid to a liquid. It's called melting, the M word, like M&Ms. M&Ms melt in your mouth, not in your hand, right? You gotta get enough energy to turn them into a liquid. Now, to turn the liquid into a gas, you, you know, some people say, oh, that's boiling. But you know what? Evaporating is also going from liquid to gas. So we use the V word. Vaporizing means going from liquid to gas. It includes both the boiling and the uh, evaporation. In reverse, going from a liquid to a solid is the F word. We try not to say the F word very much in chem, but it's freezing. You knew that as well. 
Now, when a gas becomes a liquid, like if you have a teapot on and it's whistling because steam is boiling out the top of it, if you were to put your finger in front of that steam, that would be really stupid. When the steam hits your finger, it would cool down and turn into a liquid and it would release an enormous amount of energy in your finger and you would cry. So don't do that. But condensing is when a gas becomes a liquid. Now, the bottom two, going from solid to a gas or gas to a solid, these are the tricky ones because they don't happen very often. Although most substances can do this as well, usually it's got a little more to do with the pressure and it doesn't happen normally, but water can do this too. Um, and we're gonna see an example of it too. I got a great little demo to show you in a few minutes. But the bottom two, going from a solid to the gas without being a liquid first, that's called sublimating or sublimation. And the reverse, when the gas goes directly to the solid without turning into a liquid first, that's called deposition. The gas deposits itself as a solid. So you have to memorize six of these. You gotta get on this. Look at this beautiful, beautiful thing. So a couple things I'm gonna show you. Behind me, I have a, in the back of the room, I have a vent. Um, the big box, I'll turn the light on in a second. It's a little bright. That's why I got it off right now. But there's a big box and up in the ceiling here, there's a big fan that sucks air out of the room and out through the roof. So in case I were to make some beautiful looking but poisonous gas, I wouldn't want to breathe it, right? But I would turn the fan on and suck it out the roof and it would disperse. I'm not going to make very much. You don't have to worry. Vestal is safe. I do this all the time. So I'm going to turn a solid element called iodine into a gas. Now the solid itself comes out of a jar. Let's see how these uh, lights work. It's gonna be hard for you to see, but I gotta get really close. Let's see. It's, it's almost like a grayish powder. Where is that? See it? It almost looks like a gray rock. It's powdery and dry and uh, solid as a rock. I'm putting it on a ring stand. This piece of metal with the flat parts called the ring stand. And I have, I have a Bunsen burner right here too. I'm gonna light that Bunsen burner up in a second. So I'm gonna turn on the gas. I'm gonna spark the Bunsen burner. And I have the flame. I'm gonna get the light out so you can see that a little better. Can you see that? The flame is this high. Down here is that cone of paint I was telling you about. And down at the bottom, it's still pretty hot, but the hottest part is that cone. Now look, I can pick it up. This is not hot. This is not hot. This is not hot. It's hot up here. The brass tip will get hot, but not the tube. This tube turns and the holes here that let the air in make it more intense or less intense. There's a valve at the bottom to control the gas, but this is good, I just lowered it, there we go. So I'm gonna put this underneath the iodine solid and we're gonna heat that up. And what's gonna happen is the heat it's going to make this iodine shake, 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 shake. And at some point, it's not going to be a liquid. It's going to jump into the gas phase. I'm starting to see a little of it right now. You see that? I dropped my mouse. Let's see. Where is this camera? I know I'm making you dizzy. Can you see that? Turn on the fan. There's some pretty purple gas. See it? I'm going to turn the fan on. It's going to suck that gas out. But that gas is a beautiful purple gas, but it's actually a little bit poisonous. So we keep it locked back there. And I can turn the fan on once or twice. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on top. And the jaw that I put on top is a lot colder than that hot iodine gas. And what's going to happen is the iodine gas is going to touch something colder 
and it's going to immediately jump back to the solid phase. So the heat makes it sublimate. And then the coldness from the beaker or the, this cup on the top, can you see that, how dark it is? That's the solid iodine again. The gas becomes a solid. That's called deposition. And it's very hard to see this maybe on the screen, but it sparkles a little. Sparkles beautiful because it's solid iodine. Pretty cool. And that's still pumping out some purple gas. I'm gonna set this fan going, get the air moving in the right direction, and then we'll let that be. And that'll suck the gas out and we don't have to worry. Look at that beautiful picture. Sublimation and deposition. If you'd like to see the other phase changes, put some water in the liquid form into your freezer and every 10 minutes open the freezer and it's gonna turn solid. Later, take one of those ice cubes out and put it on the kitchen table or put it in your hand and every once in a while, look at it. It'll turn to a liquid. You can put some liquid water in a pot on the stove and turn the stove on high and it'll bubble. And the gas that comes out is called H2O gas or steam or water vapor. And then if you want, you can put your hand in there. If it's a pot, you can do this. Not if it's a tea kettle, just put your hand in quick and take it out and your hand will be moist. That's where the steam touches your colder hand and that steam gas turns into liquid gas. If you do it too much, it's gonna burn because it's really hot. But if you just put your hand over the boiling water, you'll feel you get some moisture right away. That's called condensing. All right, I love this picture. This picture is gonna be on the next lab report after we do after the penny lab. This explains the difference between a physical change and a chemical change. Now let's look at the blue stuff first, the physical change. In a physical change, which is a phase change, <laughs> In a phase change, a solid becomes a liquid or a liquid becomes a gas or vice versa. They go in reverse. No new matter forms. H2O solid becomes H2O liquid. It's not new stuff. There's no new chemical properties. It's physically different. It's the same formula though. It's the same stuff, just a different phase. When liquid water becomes gas water, H2O liquid becomes H2O gas. All we're doing is rearranging the atoms or the particles that make that substance up. Where are the particles? Are they stuck together? Is it a solid? Are they sticky but moving? Is it a liquid? Or are they zooming around so fast you can't even see them, they're too small, but are they in the gas phase? Now with a chemical change, when we do chemical reactions, we're gonna do a lot of chemical reactions. In a chemical reaction, you have at least two different things you start with, right? And they're gonna to bond together. Well, maybe you have one thing and it unbonds, but you're gonna have what you start with and what you end with are gonna have bonding or unbonding that are gonna occur. But really what happens is new matter, new kinds of matter form, right? If you have hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, which are elements and we make water like I did in that first Zoom, water has different properties. Hydrogen and oxygen are explosive. Water puts fires out, right? Sodium is a shiny silver metal. Chlorine is a poison gas, but when we bond them together, they make a white crystal solid sodium chloride that you have to eat or you die. You can't eat them separate, but you gotta eat them together. New matter forms. The sodium chloride has different properties, different formula, different everything than the original reactants. Physical changes are phase changes. Chemical changes are reactions and new stuff with new properties forms. This is a very important picture. And I know, because I was a high school student, Looking at a picture like this, you're like, oh gosh, I don't wanna look at this, this is boring. You need to understand this, right? Physical and chemical changes both rearrange the particles, but one, the physical change only rearranges the particles but doesn't change them. But in a chemical change, you get new stuff and new matter. Now, what are mixtures? Remember we had matter? Matter was the main topic here. We had pure stuff, which is the elements and the compounds, and then what are mixtures? Mixtures are physical blends of stuff. Take your different things, salt and sand and sugar, just throw them in a bucket and spin it up with your hand or shake it up. You just mix them together. You're not getting new stuff. You're just getting stuff that's mixed together. Now the properties of matter in a mixture are constant. If you put sand and salt and sugar in a bucket, 
you don't get some new thing called something else. You, you, you have three things that are mixed together. Some of it's sweet, some of it's sandy, and some of it's salty. You don't get new stuff with new properties. You've just mixed stuff together. No new compounds are formed. No new properties. And you can physically separate these mixtures from each other. You don't have to do chemistry to them. You can do physical separation. And we'll look at that in the next slideshow. Now, mixtures can be two things. They can either be the same throughout. Some mixtures, when you mix them like salt and water, they become the same salty throughout. Sometimes if you put sugar and salt in the sugar bowl, you got your friend coming over and you think he's going to make some, some coffee and you want to play a trick on him, you can put white salt and white sugar stir them together and you can't really tell them apart. And when he scoops some of that into his coffee, he's gonna, it's gonna taste terrible. But those are not the same throughout. You might get a little sugarier or a little saltier spoonful. Mixtures that are the same throughout have a name. It starts with an H. And mixtures that are differently mixed throughout also starts with a word that starts with the letter H, but it's a different word. And those words are homogeneous and heterogeneous. If they're the same throughout, like sugar water or salty water, that's called homogeneous. Homo means the same, genius actually means so like the same body type. It's the same throughout. Heterogeneous, hetero means different, genius means body type in a sense, um, the same kind of mix. Uh, so heterogeneous is different mix, homogeneous is the same mix. Examples, all aqueous solutions are homogeneous. Salt water is the same saltiness throughout. Sugar water, coffee is the same. My salsa is homogeneous. Heterogeneous is like a tossed salad. Or if you make chocolate milk and you pour too much chocolate sauce in, some of it doesn't even dissolve. It just stays on the bottom. It's not mixed the same throughout. The bottom is more chocolatey. The top is less chocolatey. If you only put a little chocolate in, you don't stir it. The bottom is still more chocolatey than the top. So some things mix the same throughout. Some things are not mixed the same throughout. You gotta know those vocabulary words. Now here's some examples. Sand and water, when you put them together, you could shake them, but the sand falls out pretty quick and it's wet on top and more solid dry on the bottom. Even if it's damp sand, it's not the same throughout. But sugar water, you shake it up, sweet all the way through. And one part's not gonna be sweeter than the other. Now, salty water, chocolate milk, or oil and water. Salt and water is homogeneous. It is the same throughout. Chocolate milk is heterogeneous because some of the chocolate's going to settle to the bottom. Now, oil and vinegar, they're mixed. They don't mix very well, right? If you shake them, they'll mix better, but they are heterogeneous because they'll come apart. There's very little actual mixing. And even if you shake the hell out of them or stir them up, you mix them temporarily and then they're going to come back apart. And we'll talk about why they come back apart. That's actually really cool physical property change where the oil and the water are different from each other and they, that's what they do. They, they layer, they don't really mix. Even if you shake them, they come back apart. All right, this is the last slide here. Mixtures can come in all phases and here's examples. You can have solids, you can have elements, carbon and zinc, right? If you combine them though, carbon and iron, if you melt them together, you get something called steel. That's a solid mixture. There's no real recipe. You can put a little more carbon, a little less carbon, different qualities of steel. If you have zinc, it's an element, the copper is an element. If you melt them together, you can get something called brass. You make tubas and trumpets out of that stuff. Brass has different qualities. Zinc is very silvery. Copper is very, very bright, uh, reddish orange. Brass is more of a golden color and it doesn't dent as much. It doesn't uh, rust. It's kind of cool brass, but it's, it's really just a mixture. You've melted them together. If you melt them again, you can separate them based on the differences of their melting points. Now, liquids, ethanol and fruit juice. Ethanol is a compound that you call casually alcohol. There's thousands of kinds of alcohol, but the ethanol is the kind with two carbons, and that's the kind people drink in small quantities. It makes them drunk. It's not very good for you. But if you mix a little ethanol with fruit juice, you would have what's called wine. Now, another liquid called acetic acid, if you mix that with water, that's called vinegar. Vinegar is an acid. It's a very weak acid, so it doesn't dissolve your tongue. There's strong acids and weak acids. But you can have liquid mixtures. You can have solid mixtures. A gas mixture is just called air. Oxygen and nitrogen, and there's water vapor, and oh, the lights just went out. Um, there's methane, 
there's helium, there's all kinds of gases, but you can mix gases together and you get what's called air. Now, aqueous, table salt and water gives you salty water, and sugar and food color and water gives you something called Kool-Aid or fruit drink, fruit drink or something like that. These are just different kinds of mixtures. You can have solid mixtures, liquid mixtures, gas mixtures, or aqueous. Sometimes they are the same throughout. Sometimes they're different throughout. Sometimes they're homogeneous, sometimes they're heterogeneous. Thank you so much. This is the end of this first Zoom.